and both looking to learn from that first meeting two years back. I'm looking to uh, a technical fight. This time it's going to be a completely different fight because I've been doing some revisions on the previous fight we had before and um, to my knowledge it's not going to be a hard fight. You know when you got two bombers in there people expect the, the fight to, to end real quickly but the, I think he's very durable and I think I've proven that I can take a punch or two myself. If we get hit uh, we know how to take him, we know how to come back and we're both in condition so I think you're going to see a good 12 round fight. Is the time. But, uh, those weight divisions are basically the same. At the moment, this is being considered a non-title fight due to the legal involvements. And at the moment, the WBC is meeting on this very subject. But the fight is on, and that was not the case as late as this past Friday night. And with the fight on, let's go to the ring for the introductions. Here's Chuck Hall. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Caesars Palace Sports Pavilion, where today John Chargan Productions, in association with Caesars Palace, presents a 12-round contest of the people's champions. These bouts are sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. The officials assigned by that commission this afternoon, the judges are Dwayne Ford, Lou Tabbitt, and Dave Moretti. The timekeepers, Charlie Roth and Jane Broadfoot. The attending physician at ringside, Dr. Flip Omansky. And the referee is Richard Steele. This is the main event of the afternoon. 12 rounds of boxing in the super featherweight division. Introducing, in the blue corner, fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada. Weighing in at 129 and three quarter pounds. He has a professional record of 38 wins, three defeats. He is a former world champion and currently rated by the WBC as number one in his division. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the very popular Cornelius Boza Edwards. And in the red corner, fighting out of Oroville, California, weighing in at 129 and three quarter pounds, his professional record consists of 51 wins, six defeats, and one draw. He is the reigning WBC Super Featherweight Champion of the World, schoolboy Bobby Chacon. And you hear the reception for Bobby Chacon. Very popular, very colorful fighter out of California. All smiles in entering the ring. I want to caution you to obey my commands at all times. In case of a knockdown, the fighter that is standing, go to the farther neutral corner. Remain there till I tell him to come out. You can use Vaseline, but use it very lightly. Shake hand. Good luck to both of you. Referee Richard Steele. We're scheduled for 12. 31-year-old Bobby Chacon. The WBC Super Featherweight Champ. His last fight last December. 15-round decision over Bazooka Limon, one of the great fights of the year to win the WBC title. Cornelius Pose Edwards, who we last saw here on NBC, he stopped Pedro Laza here in Las Vegas in round nine. That was back in February. And Pose Edwards, as you see, a southpaw in the white going up against Tricone in the red. In May of 81, Boza Edwards stopped Chacon after round 13, successfully defending his title. And Chacon says in that particular bout, oh, good right hand by Chacon. That bout, Chacon went for the early knockout. He said he would not do that here today or look to do it. And Chacon got tagged by Boza Edwards. they have both been tagging each other right now. There's been some very hard punches thrown. Bozer has landed some uh, very sharp punches. Uh, Chacon, for his part, has landed one good punch, but it did not seem to bother Bozer Edwards at all. Chacon seeming to take this fight very lightly at the beginning, laughing, smiling at the crowd. I think he's going to get very serious very shortly. A low 
blow. Bose is sort of saying, uh, 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 that wasn't nice. A criticism of both fighters is that they take too many punches. They both land, but also both get hit, as we've seen in this uh, opening round. Well, they have really been trading some very hard punches. Bozer, in particular, has found the range early. Bozer seems much more determined at the beginning of this fight. I don't think Bobby's woken up yet to the fact that he's in a title fight. Opening round with Bosa Edwards trapping Bobby Chacon in the corner. But Chacon not doing bad in the corner. He wants to stay there. And here's Chacon back. And he stunned Bosa Edwards. There was some reason for Chacon to be in that corner. He was playing a foxy game there. And he came out hitting just where he wanted to. opening first round both men inflicting a considerable amount of damage in the first round right hand by Boza Edwards answered by the Chicago right as we approach 10 seconds left in round one that's a slip and uh, Richard Steele Jim O'Brien and family recently lost their home. Today, they're the controversial call by the referee Richard Steele. Now you see, there was a punch, but he had slipped down on a slick part of the canvas. Now the referee didn't actually know what to call that. He looked over to the corner. They did call it a knockdown. Since Bosa Edwards was ahead in that round, unofficially on my scorecard, it now makes it an even round. A very important round in uh, this fight. It's opened up with a lot of controversy, just like it has been all week long. And this is round two. Marv Albert with the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco. Las Vegas, Nevada. And Bosa Edwards on the attack. Now Bobby Tricot is looking to cover up. for some reason likes to fight off those ropes. He's not really getting hammered on the ropes by uh, Boza, and he apparently has a plan to counterattack. Look at that. All hooks. And also taking some shots. He's paying for it. Both these guys are burning themselves out in the earlier rounds. That's the only term you can use because they're going flat out. And this is exactly what Chacon said he would not look to do. Well, when you're getting hit by both Edwards, you forget your plan and come back fighting. But that's the only way Bobby Chacon knows how to fight. Uh, he's getting whipped now by Bosa Edwards. Serious damage being inflicted by Bosa Edwards. Bad mistake by Chacon to stay there. Whether this is Chacon's plan, I really wonder, as again, he's trapped in the corner. Chacon taking two or three to land one. Chacon has some kind of a cut. He's got blood coming from a little nick on his eye, on his left eye. Something had to give. There were too many punches landing for something not to give, and his left eye has now got a cut. Bosa Edwards is relentless. There is virtually no movement in this fight. This is... Second round.
Do I smell roast duck? There to be in big trouble. We saw the nick under the eye that is being taken care of in the corner, but then he landed the right hand. Here it is. Flush on the jaw. But that's the way Bobby Chacon fights, and that's the way Boza Edwards fights. Let's face it, Boza has no defense, and neither does Bobby Chacon, so anything can happen in any minute. Now, the bell for the um, opening of round three, Boza did not appear between rounds and to be uh, affected. They were not doing, working very hard on him. He just came back from a flash knockdown on Chacon's corner. They were telling him, you're throwing too many punches. Start planning your fight. And Chacon said, that's the only way I can fight. So he had a slip in round one, an authentic knockdown in round two. Both rounds controversial. Oh, what an exchange. Boza taking another right hand flush on the nose. This one didn't seem to bother him, but boy, is he taking straight shots. Minute gone by, third round, the combination by Boza Edwards, and again Chacon in the corner, he is consistently trapped in the corner, this time able to spit out. I don't know if he's trapped or if he falls back there and stays back because he thinks he can fight better off the ropes. He certainly could have moved off before and he stays there. Now, you know, this fight does not figure to go the distance the way these two guys have started at this burnout pace, but if you're scoring the fight, you've got to be going crazy because Boza's taking this whole round and then goes down at the end. Uh, Richard Steele, the referee, says stop the pushing. The scoring on the 10-point must, that is if we do get involved in a scoring situation and the uh, scoring handled by the three judges, the referee does not take part. Three knockdown rule in effect, and the bell does not save the fighter except in the final round. So no matter what you mean right now, what your eyes are... Oh, oh look at him! Yeah, but he, he's indicating that he's all right. Same kind of flash knockdown. Same kind of flash knockdown. He's not hurt. He's laughing. In fact, looking over at us as if to say, I'm all right. He's an actor, Bobby Chacon. He is an actor. He's playing to his audience. Now, that's the third time that either Bosa Edwards or Chacon has gone down. The first one, though, did appear to be a slip. Bosa Edwards finding the range with that right jab. And Bosa Edwards with those knife-like punches. And they end with the throw. Straight left hand that put down Chacon. He caught him completely off balance, and there it was. He went down. It was a flash knockdown. He was up in a minute, and no problem. Back to the action. And this is round four. Get the check of Bobby for Bobby Chacon, who over his 11-year career has been ripped off his finish many times, but has continually come back. And again, the referee Richard Steele with the warning about the shove by Bosa Edwards. Believe it or not, curiously enough, this is an even fight. Bosa down in the first, Bosa down in the second, Chacon down in the third, and it's a 29-29 fight. Keep those hands up, Unofficially, of course, on my scorecard, Bosa has been inflicting the heavier damage. Bobby Chacon, that cut over his eye, has not become a factor. Great corner work. And he came out looking very fresh in this fourth round. Not the case in the earlier round. Bobby Chacon, the WBC Super Featherweight Champion. Cornelius Bolton Edwards, the former champion and ranked number one contender. Chacon, who had plastic surgery to his nose, not being bothered by his nose right now. 
That plastic surgeon can take a great deal of pride in his work because he's been hammered right on the nose by over a hundred hard punches. And we're past the halfway point. Fourth round scheduled for 12. There he is again, Bobby Chacon in a corner. He just seems to like it there. Good solid right hand, another solid right hand by Bose Edwards. And Chacon back following the Bosa Edwards uppercut. Oh, right hand by Bosa Edwards again on target. All the hooks that Bosa wants to throw are landing, and uppercuts are landing as well. What is keeping little Bobby Chacon together? I don't know. It has been non-stop from the opening bell. Both Bosa Edwards and Chacon have gone down. Bobby Chacon, 31 years old, out of Los Angeles, California, against the 26-year-old Cornelius Bosa Edwards from Uganda. We'll be back in a moment. The bell that concluded in round four, extracurricular action. This is all after the bell, and the referee, Richard Steele, really had a job to uh, hold the two away, and then uh, both apologized. We are now on to round five. Chacon in the red, Cornelius Bosa Edwards in the white, both have been knocked down. Right at the bell, ending that round, when they kept fighting, Bosa had gotten stung and buckled. That's why the fighting continued, and so, Bobby Chacon opened this round. Oh, he's bleeding from the, Bobby's bleeding from the nose. That part that we had just spoken about last round has begun to cave in. Good, strong punching by Bobby Chacon to open this round. You can take a look now as you as you see the damage that's being inflicted by Boza Edwards. Chacon trying to end this now because it's doubtful of his face can take this kind of punishment for 12 rounds. And it's gone by round five and again they exchange. I believe from the way he's pawing at his nose, I believe he's got difficulty with his nose. If it's not broken, it certainly gives him a lot of pain. Again, for the place where he likes to fight, Bobby Chacon. No shortage of bravery. He's in there trading with Mose Edwards. Chacon has been effectively slipping in this fifth round. Back in May of 1981, that was two years ago here in Las Vegas. Chacon gave everything he had. His legs quit before his heart did and could not make it out of the corner for round 14 against Boza Edwards. And then tragedy struck the Chacon family. His wife, Valerie, who had been pleading with Bobby to retire from boxing, committed suicide about a year ago. Bobby left with three children. And still the dream of a championship. And he then proceeded to pull off one of the storybook comebacks in boxing history, climaxed by the victory over the Zuka to win the title. Great fighting off the ropes by Bobby Chacon, who's been getting hammered. There goes the mouthpiece. Hard to tell who that was. I, it's Bobby Chacon's mouthpiece. He's looking like he's wearing out, although he's dangerous in spurts. And again, they finish with the floor. Round five coming to a conclusion. We'll be back in 30 seconds to check out Chicago's corner. Seven quarter. They're more worried about the eye than the nose, although they have put a pad of adrenaline up his nose. They're working very hard. They seem to be very calm in the corner. Both cornermen, Joe Ponce, Will Edgington, have been working. It looks like they've got the corner, I mean, the eye completely under control. The nose is no longer bleeding, but Will, as soon as this fight starts. And this is round six. Referee Richard Steele. Had a very tough five rounds. 
Blunt. Oh, combination by Chacon. Chacon seems to catch Moses Edwards at the beginning of these rounds. But Blunt pouring down the right side of the face of Chacon. Combination by Bosa Edwards. Well, it's a question of physical stamina from here on in. No question about it. Both men are beginning to wear out. Now the right side of Bobby Chacon's brow is beginning to bleed. That means he has cuts over the right and left, and he has trouble with his nose. Nobody can take this kind of punishment without having some type of injury inflicted. Unless Bobby Chacon can get very lucky. With Moza Edwards, the handwriting is on the wall. was too soon after that devastating fight with Bazooka Lamont, and it might well be. Crowd urging Chacon on, but has not been able to land much. Again, uh, the push by Boza Edward. Halfway through round six. The difference is that Boza is a non-stop punching machine, whereas Chacon is trying to get in his one or two lucky shots. Not much on that last combination thrown by Chacon. You almost wonder how there could be anything left. The right eye is now bleeding badly. The cut is now... Oh, see that, that, that was that slick spot where Boza Edwards slipped in the first round. And it gave Chacon an opportunity to clear the blood from his right eye. He could not see. Slippery canvas again. Bosa Edwards had a problem. Bobby Chacon needs a miracle to win this fight. It's only in the sixth round, but the result is written on his face already. stay right here we're going to stay with it and check out the corner of Bobby Chacon between rounds no, 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 no. Bobby Chacon's face a mask of love as he gets back to the corner Joe Ponce and Will Edgerton Frank Williams very serious here comes a commission doctor to look in very serious decision to be made. Let's listen. All right. Close your eyes, Ryan. Can you hear me? That's going to stop that. Close your eyes. That doctor just said if this keeps on going, we're going to stop it. What he's saying is you've got one more round, son, and after that, it's curtains. That's the ringside position, Dr. Flip. Stop it? No. Yeah, he'll stop it. Huh? Referee uh, Richard Steele also uh, asked, you want to stop the fight? And, uh, uh, that was not well received. He's still, he's, this, is, this is a very severe fight for him, and he feels like he can get lucky with one punch. He deserves one round. Now, the opening of this round should be a blitzkrieg. All right, this is round seven. It's scheduled for 12. Chacon went down earlier. Bosa Edwards was put down earlier. Chacon has to go for the knockout. Enough, Boza Edwards is unmarked. Watch the elbow, watch the elbow. Watch the elbow. Again, the water for Boza Edwards. And the round has not even started, and Chacon is bleeding from both brows and the nose. He doesn't even like, look like he's got that much on his punches when he throws it. Well, we saw that in a series of combinations last round. Looks like uh, his energy level has diminished. Fierce fight, but the last two rounds, I'm afraid, have been all Boza Edwards. The weight of that attack is so much that I don't believe it's fair to ask Chacon to take much more. And uh, Richard Steele 
apparently uh, wants to get a closer look at Bobby Chacon, and here comes Dr. Hrabanski. It would not be... He's going to let it go, but he won't let it go much longer is what he said. That means this is the last round of this fight. So they resume about a minute 15 in round seven of the desperation time for Bobby Chacon, which means he could get caught. Bobby Chacol, the WBC Super Featherweight Champion, although at the moment this is considered a non-title bout, the WBC meeting on that matter right now, and number one contender Cornelius Bosa Edwards. And for Bobby Chacol, it may mean just one minute left to turn this around. That will depend on the doctor as he checks to call out in the corner if this round does go the duration. He's back in his favorite corner, and I must say it's cost him his fight. Get out. Get out. Because Boza has dominated the corner action. So the time running down. That's time left. And we're down to 30 seconds, round seven. on the punches of Chacon. But still dangerous, Mark. Still dangerous. We're going to stay right here between rounds to see what takes place in the corner of Chacon. One wonders why both is fighting that way, knowing that all he's got to do is survive this round. All right, now the, the pressure is on the ringside position. Let's All right, let's take a listen. All right, I talked to his doctor. We don't let it go. Yeah. Right, but just get yeah. You keep on. You want it? You want to keep fighting? Yeah. He's all right, Doc. He's, yeah, it's, he's, it's he's all right. He'll be all right. All right. He'll be all right. What the heck? He'll be all right. All right, well, get something on that. Well, Dr. Hrabatsky pulling away I from his initial observation. Oh, what a shame. Yeah. What a shame. I... It, both eyes are ripped, his nose is bleeding, and while his cornermen are brave, and no question about it, Chacon is very brave, and this is a very tough fight, but he's so far behind, and they gave him one round to do what he wanted to, and he couldn't. I really, really would like to see this fight stop right now, Mark. We're working a little closer, working a little closer. All right, we are headed to round eight on the Fight Doctor scorecard. Cornelius Boza Edwards in front. 69 to 65. It is on the 10 point bus system here in the state of Nevada. So again, Chacon in a situation where he needs a knockout. And Bosa Edwards comes right at Chacon as we open up. Bobby Chacon at this moment looks the same way he did in the uh, late rounds when he was beaten by Bosa Edwards two years ago. Yeah, well, he's just reaching the limits of his endurance, I think. Watch your head, dude. You know, he's always dangerous. Bobby's always dangerous, as he proved with Bazooka Limon. But he is um, much older now. That beating was a pretty bad beating five months ago, and he really doesn't need much more. That's the beating, although in a uh, victorious manner, to win the title. 15-round decision over Bazooka Limon. Well, unfortunately, your body and your brain don't know that. And the trunks of Boza Edwards. Full of the blood of Bobby Chacon. And again, a timeout. So I don't know. I don't know about this. That many timeouts, that many things. I mean, what do they need? Let's listen. What's he asking him? Does he want to still fight for? Oh, he's all I'm all right. You're all right. He's all Go. right. Like that. He's not I can't see that. I can't see that. What is a doctor asking a boxer if he still wants to fight? What does he think he's going to say? No. Especially a man of the valor and proven ability of Bobby Chacon. All they're giving Chacon is a lot of rest and a lot of time. Edwards on the attack. 
Bosa does not relent. He continues to come on. And Chacon with the combination. And the crowd coming alive. It's been a Chacon crowd. There's the doctor, Flip Hernandez, ringside position. Less than a minute left. And this, the eighth round. You marvel at marvel at the courage of Bobby Chacon, but you marvel at the fact that they're letting him continue with his face falling apart. Bosa Edwards beginning to show some signs of being tired. Well, he should. He's done everything there is over the last seven rounds. He needs one round to rest. And we're final seconds. Eighth round. We'll be back right after we pause for these words. This is the last round for you. We're on it. Okay. You better get We're on it. Dr. Brevator Creech, a plastic surgeon who stepped in to take charge. And well, he should have. He said one more, and that's plenty. But they told him once more two rounds ago. This is round nine, and Bobby Chacon has taken a thrashing from Cornelius Boza Edwards. Both Boza Edwards and Chacon have gone down. And the referee Richard Steele has called several timeouts, but has chosen to go to the uh, corner and ask the uh, advice of the doctor rather than stop the fight. Yes, I thought the referee had the power to stop it, but he will not. Now here comes Chacon fighting back. Also, there's been no use of the standing eight count. Which is in effect here in the state of Nevada. Well, he's been using a timeout, which has taken more than eight seconds. Yes, he's been giving him a lot of rest. That's the ringside position. Dr. Hernandez looking on. Dr. Hernandez has been listening to Dr. Creech. Thank goodness that he has, because this should be the last round of this fight, unless Chacon gets extremely active and lucky. Of course, that's the rationale of those who will say, well, why stop it? He still could fight. And you look at the flurry right here, but people who say that are not thinking about the long term damage. Yeah, we're talking about the health of Bobby Chacon, who this may be his last fight. He has three children. He has a mountain of money now. He doesn't need to risk his health. But here he comes back. At this moment, it's an academic point, but Boza Edwards is totally in control of the fight. Less than a minute left. Ninth round. It's scheduled for 12. But if you can believe, and they have changed the course of direction several times, if you can believe the last corner conference, it was said again that this will be the final round. We'll see. But here's Chacon back strong. Oh, and Jose Edwards slipped. No, no knockdown. not a knockdown. A slip. Definitely a slip on that same part that he slipped in before. crowd urging to hold on. That's what's going to make it so difficult to stop this fight. Bobby's always full of life at the end. This crowd will not react well if the bout is stopped. And let me this round, he slipped. He slipped again. They're both exhausted. Their legs are not holding up under them. Bose's legs are wobbly now, even though he's been winning. All right, this is going to be interesting. Now, this is going to be interesting. That's what I said. That's what I thought you said. As we listen in on the corner. Uh, he's not even bleeding no more. Come on. Jesus Christ. It's not. It's not. Get your ass in here, man. Yeah. All right. The quarterman said he's not even bleeding anymore. Right? And Creech gave a medical opinion. He said, get your ass in gear. All right. Work on it. Okay, I want to look up. Look up at me. Stop it for Look down. Look down. Look over here. Look over at me. He's all right. Get his water bottle. Go. 
The doctor has been examining his eyes with an ophthalmoscope to see if he's reacting, if there's any brain damage, if there's any kind of damage at all. He doesn't see any, and by golly, they're going to let it go. What can he tell here off a simplistic observation concerning brain damage? He can't at all, anything. So, the bout continues. Round 10. And uh, obviously, enormous pressure on the part of the, uh, the medical people to stop about with Chacon coming back. Well, no, according to uh, Bosa Edwards, but uh, the referee did not pick it up. Chacon at this moment looking fresher than Bosa Edwards. I really don't think either fighter looks fresh. I think it's whoever's going to wilt first. No question, Chacon's having his best round for the last four or five. Looked like a low blow again by Chacon. And Chacon is having difficulty seeing out of the left eye. He's battling it now. Bosa's having trouble controlling his legs. Bosa's legs have been wobbled. What a turnaround by Chacon, though. Look at Chacon. He can't even keep his hands up. He's so tired, he can't even put his hands up. Look at this. Even on the attack, even on the attack, Bosa's legs are wobbly. Exhausted. That's the halfway mark, round 10 of a fight that will prompt much discussion for weeks to come. Bobby Chacon, 31 years old, Los Angeles, California, long time veteran, 51 and 6, 32 knockouts, looking to hang out. He is the WBC Super Featherweight champ going against the former champ, 26-year-old Cornelius Bosa Edwards out of Uganda, now living in England. A man who beat Chacon two years ago and has been a bloodbath most of the way here today. Oh, Chacon is a mess right now. Chacon back in his corner, back to his fighting, but getting pummeled. 25 seconds, Bosa just doesn't let up. Chacon throwing everything with every punch, but exhausting himself as he does. And we come to the end of round 10. Volkswagen announces. All right, as both come out for round 11, let's listen to some of the con work in the corner of Bobby Chacon between rounds. He's only got, he's only got two more rounds. He's, he's ahead. So why stop him? Why stop it, the cornerman said, talking to the uh, ringside positions. Now the pressure on the, uh, the doctor. To stop it right here, had they decided earlier, they might have gotten away with it. But the crowd has gotten behind Chacon, and I get the feeling that they're pressured by the support for Chacon. I think so, and I and I also think that uh, they're being calmed by the corner. The guy says, we're ahead. Well, if he's ahead, I don't know what fight they're watching, but he's so far behind, he needs a knockout. And here's the crowd again, chatting for Chacon. It was also pointed out in Chacon's corner that uh, Boza Edwards' legs are very wobbly, that he has nothing going, but uh, both have little punching power. Well, there's no question that Boza's legs are going. Boza's legs are going, but Chacon's face is gone. similar to the bout two years ago here in Las Vegas between the two in which Bobby Chacon was stopped at the end of round 13. He could not come out for round 14. It 
Bobby Landy, some lucky sucker punches just then. As lucky as for 12. Patrick Cone landing with the right continues to fight with the hands down actually conserving energy as he tries to load up. But all his hands down are doing for him is catching punches right in the face. But one good shot and Boza Edwards could go down. That's why they don't want to stop it. I would think it very unlikely that this bout would be stopped at this point. Particularly in that Chacon has had a good round. Right. We'll be back with the 12th and final in just a moment. In the final round, Marv Albert, the fight doctor, Bernie Pacheco, Las Vegas, Nevada, and the doctors did not even make an appearance between rounds in the corner of Bobby Chacon. And in the corner of Chacon, they were telling him, you've got this fight. Of course, you never know now that uh, there is the possibility of a decision, the scoring on the 10 point loss. The fight doctor scorecard has to home trailing in the bout, but we shall see if it does go the distance. You don't know how they counted those first two knockdowns at Chacon. If they counted at 10-8, you just don't know. But I would say that Boza Edwards is safely ahead on points. And here's Chacon putting Boza Edwards down. And nearly landed face first on our left. What this crowd has been waiting for. Here comes Bobby. Two minutes remaining. 12th and final round. And nope. Chacon encouraged by that last knockdown. Has he got the strength to finish Boza? And has Boza got the strength to take it? Chacon now looking to reach back for everything. Boza has nothing. Boza has nothing. He has nothing on his punches. He's got to survive a minute 34 without any punching power and no legs. And slipping all over the ring is Boza Edwards. That's because his legs are playing a trick on him. It's slippery. There's a lot of blood. There's a lot of water on the canvas. Bobby thinks he's got to fight one now. He's even doing a little alley shuffle. Boza Edwards nearly went down. That was more of a slip. He has no legs. Here comes Chacon. All right, less than a minute left. Both and final round. Bobby has this fight right in his hands, and he doesn't know it. It should have been stopped rounds ago, but there's Bobby. Boza has nothing. Those are taps to the cheeks of Chacon. He must not know how close he is to knocking out Bose Edwards. You'll see the time running down. 25 seconds remaining. And it may be that Chacon, oh, low, low. It may be that Chacon still does need the knockout. I don't think he thinks so because his quarter's been telling him he's ahead. And now with this big knockdown, it's a 10-8 round. It really is going to be close now. Final seconds of the bout. And what a gutty performance by Bobby Chacon. And the crowd reacts. It appeared that the bout could have been stopped on several occasions as you were requesting earlier but as we said when you look back later on the rationale will be if it does go the distance as it did uh, those who say well how can you stop the bout in such a situation those who have that opinion will say look Chacon went the distance absolutely it's one of those things where you got to decide what's better the safety of the fighter or the outcome of the ring of the uh, fight 
This has been a typical Bobby Chacon fight. I still have Bo's ahead, 115, 113, but that last knockdown was extremely important. All right, so we await the word from the judges, Wayne Ford, Lou Tobbitt, and Dave Moretti will be back with the decision in a moment. But right now, let's go to Los Angeles and more of the U.S. UCLA the officials up. back in Las Vegas. We are set for the decision. Was it Bobby Chacon or Cornelius Boza Edwards? Let's go to the ring. Here's Chuck Hall. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the decision of the judges. Judge Dwayne Ford scores... 115, 113. Judge Lou Tabbitt scores 115, 112. Judge Dave Moretti scores 117, 111. For the winner and still super featherweight champion of the world, Bobby Chacon. Bobby Chacon with the decision over Cornelius Boza Edwards. Fight Doctor's scorecard had it. Boza Edwards, 115-113. We'll be back to uh, get into that subject in just a moment. Back in Las Vegas, Nevada, Marv Albert with Bertie Pacheco. Bobby Chacon by decision in a dramatic come from behind effort over Cornelius Boza Edwards. Let's go to the ring. Here's Ferdy. Congratulations. That might have been the fight of the year this far. I must tell you both, Marv, Albert and I were very worried about your safety. We both were hoping that they would stop the fight for your safety. You proved us wrong. You came back and you won the fight. But uh, we were kind of worried. I personally thought we, on our scorecard, Boza had won. However, you won unanimously on all scorecards. And I think that last round pulled it out for you. I think, I think the last knockdown the Well, hey, it's a tough fight. You say battle of the year. Me and Boza, he's just a top conditioner. And damn, I got a lot of guys. I, I, I want to win, you know. Like I said before, I want to win. And Boza was trying to take it away from me. I'm glad I had some reserve. I, you know, with the mix-up with the legal problems, I wasn't sure about this thing. Thanks to Mickey Duff, this thing came through for us. Thanks to Mick Mickey Duff, indeed. Now, Boza, I felt like your legs were going on you in the end. You worked so hard the first ten rounds, I felt the last two rounds, your legs were going on you. Yeah, the legs were going, but the fact was that the uh, boots I've got on, they were kind of slippery. And uh, I presume they cost me the fight. You know, it wasn't really the legs, it was that the boots kept on slipping. All right. Every time I was... I Mickey Duff the man uh, probably most instrumental in bringing this fight about. Did you feel that the fight should have been stopped because of the uh, increasingly uh, d uh, damaged face of well, Chacon? He, he certainly looked very badly cut. Uh, the doctor had a closer look for me, and they obviously decided he could go on. That at times, I thought he was bleeding very badly, but that's not our decision. That's the decision for the doctor. And so, to the, dis to the man whose decision it is, let's go to Marv Albert at ringside, who's sitting with the ring doctor. All right, and this is uh, Dr. Your judges are Carlos Padilla of the Philippines, Luis Guzman of Puerto Rico, and Tomatsu Tomahera of Hawaii. Your referee, who is non-voting from Panama, Isaac Herrera. Now introducing your champion from Mexico City in Mexico. He weighs in this evening at 129 and three quarters. The super featherweight champion of the world, Rafael Bazooka Limon! Now, the tail of the tape, you can see Limon has an edge of three years in age. A little bit of an edge of an inch in height. Two and a half inches in reach. I think maybe the years might have some telling effect as the day goes on. Over the history of these two fighters, they have both had their ups and downs. They have both been givers and takers all of their careers. They're 10-year veterans, and this could be the last big payday for the loser. 
champion left-handed in the dark green trucks Bobby Chacon in the red the referee is a Panamanian Isaac Herrera he does not have a ballot the judges are Carlos Padilla of the Philippines now living in Las Vegas Angel Luis Guzman of uh, Puerto Rico and Tomatsu Tomohara of Hawaii. The WBC representative at ringside is Haig Collegian. The scoring system for the fight under WBC rules, 10 point must. Three knockdown rule is waived. Mandatory eight count, but no standing eight. That will, however, become a fact as of the first of the year. The WBC announcing they will cut their championship fights back to 12 rounds and effect the standing eight count. No saving of the fighter by the bell except in the 15th round. The ring doctor is Dr. P.B. Montemayor. Arturo Colo Hernandez, the trainer, as Limon gets wild and Chacon hooks him over the top with the left hand. Pretty good left-handed fighter. Chacon has good power. Hard to the belly goes Limon, and his big left landed. Remember, the champion Limon has about a two and a half edge in the reach. The trainer for Bobby Chacon, Joe Ponce. The book on the two fighters, one would figure that Chacon might get off a little faster than Limon. But so far here in the first round, Bazooka giving as much as he is taking, as a matter of fact. Loaded up his left on two occasions, but each time Chacon has gotten away from it. The gloves are eight ounces. And the ring is about 17 by 17. The building is filled with boxing enthusiasts. A very heavy Latin population around the Sacramento and San Joaquin Stockton region. Pretty good left hand by Limon. Right hand comes over the top of the left hand off the forehead of Chacon. So Bazooka Limon is not opening up slow today. Goes back to the body with a right and a left and keeps poking that right hand into the face of Bobby Chacon. Ten seconds to go in the first round. Scheduled for 15. Round number two of the WBC Super Featherweight Championship. Bobby Chacon at the left, Azuka Limon the champion on the right. One of the things we're watching early in the fight is to see how well Chacon can still move. Does he still have the good wheels? Are the legs still there? The first round, he was pretty stationary. He got tagged pretty well to the body and twice to the head by the champion. Lamont is a winger. He doesn't mind missing it. He'll let it go. The right hand jabbed into the face of Chacon, pretty stiff. Like that. Pop, pop. a little bit. Lamone getting a little below the belt buckle, he thought. Belt line. Bobby's face now getting a little red from that right hand being peppered in there by Lamone. Now Chacon presses it a little bit, goes straight at him and lands a left and a right. Good right hand to the body by Chacon, but the following right to the head miss. Now Limon wings away at the body. 
Cubs over the top of the right. Cone covering in the corner. And Bazooka just waving away at him. Left hand to the side of the head. May have hurt him. Now Chacon fights out of the corner with two rights to the head. Another right by Chacon. Another right by Chacon. Yeah, another right by Bobby. And now Bazooka backs up, curls his lips, and looks with disdain and takes another left to the face. Chacon lifts his head back. Chacon scoring big with a right hand in the second round. Round three, scheduled for 15. I don't know if it'll go that far. the years I don't know that I've ever seen two fighters who are better gamers than these two a little edge in height a little edge in reach to the champion limo it is the fourth time that Bobby Chacon has tried to win a world title Bazooka popping a right hand, a sharp one to the face of Bobby Chico. by Lebon and then a right hand over the top. That right hand jab of Bazooka. Very firm. There it is. And another one. Chacon a little and brings the right hand over the top. Chacon nails him with a hard right, but Bazooka comes right back with a straight left, and they're going to give Bobby Chacon an eight count. Mandatory eight count, and the judgment of the referee, Herrera, it was a knockdown, though he didn't go all the way down. They exchanged hard blows, and it was Chacon who hit the canvas. Here's the exchange, the right hand by Chacon and the left hand by Limon. The referee called it a knockdown and gave him an eight count. We're in round number four now. Still a very even fight. For the WBC World Super Featherweight Championship. Bobby Chacon finds Limon with a good left hand. Just missed with the right and then Limon wails away at the body. Hernandez talking a lot to Bazooka. He wants him to use the right hand more. 
Bazooka's primary appetite is to just get in there and wheel away. Right hand by Chacon just missed. There's a right hand that didn't. movement by either fighter. They're just going straight at each other and a hard left hand by Bazooka Lemon as Chacon tried to duck under it and he caught him on the side of the head with it. The right hand uppercut got in. Chacon Blake, he needs to get out of that corner because Lemon is letting him go. Right hand gets him again. to get out of that corner. Does with a right hand and staggers the champion with another right hand. They bumped heads. They butted. Hard butt. A really banged head. And now Chacon pressing the fight. He's got Limon backed into the corner. They really banged heads. Dracone coming on, roaring in the last minute of the round. Less than 10 seconds to go in round number four. No. At the close of the fourth round, here's where they butted heads, right there, boom. And as a result, Bobby Chacon is bleeding on the interior near the right eye on the nose. It's a cut on the nose just toward to the right eye. And it looked to me like the butt may well have caught it. Hard to say exactly because so many punches were thrown by both men in the round. This is round five. This is the fourth meeting. Each of them winning a split decision. There was a technical draw under California rules. 27 rounds they faced each other. And they're all even, and I've still got them all even. Right hand comes over the top to the side of Bazooka's head by Chacon. That's the champion facing you. Hopping the right hand into the face. Chacon digging the left hand into the body. Bazooka loads one up and gets nothing out of it. Chacon pressing the fight. Now, we anticipated Bobby would have this kind of a run at him in the early going. Blood is not a problem from the cut on the nose for Bobby Chacon. Pounder. Again, not a lot of lateral movement. Boy, they're just going straight at the target. Taking whatever they have to in order to reach the target. Wicked left hand by Limon. Hard shots to the body by Limon. that Bobby Chacon has gone through some of the heaviest training of his life preparing for this fight. Because he knows full well after 10 years and 31 years of age, there may not be that many big paydays left. Winning the championship here would really help him get some recognition. That's what he wants. Because he's been a champion and he wants it again. 
Good left hand by Chacon on the side of the head of Mazuka at the end of round five. We're going now to round six, WBC, World Super Featherweight Championship. Bobby Chacon, the challenger on the left, Bazooka Limon, the champion on the right. They have wailed away through five rounds in this fight, their fourth meeting. The fight is very close, give or take a point either way. The three previous meetings, they came off 27 rounds of fighting all even. One of the matches being a seven round technical draw. Super featherweights are 130 pounders. Bazooka Limon of Mexico City, Bobby Chacon from Oroville, California. Bazooka, 28 years. Bobby, 31. Game little men in a big brawl at Memorial Auditorium in Sacramento. A right hand over the top was a good one on the side of the head of Chacon. A left hand by Limon. Bazooka misses with the uppercut. Hard right hand by Bazooka. And the referee, Isaac Herrera of Panama, jumps on the champion because the laces almost came open. We'd like to alert our local stations along the way. At the end of the round, we'll take a station break. Right hand and a left hand by Chacon. Bobby has a little cut inside the right side of the nose near the right eye as a result of a butt. Another right hand by Chacon. He's scoring with that right and he's been scoring throughout the fight with it. See a little bit of the blood running down but no bother to it. A bit of a nick near the corner inside corner of the champion's right eye. Not much blood from it, just a nick. The right hand lead has been very effective. That time Chacon set him up and then let the right go. A good round so far for Bobby Chacon. Another right followed by a left to the head of the champion. Another right hand by Chacon. East Wide World of Sports after this word from our local station. So far, it hasn't seemed to be any big problem for him, and that may well be the result of their headbutt, which goes back to the fourth round. So Limon comes out a little wild here in round number seven. Chacon had a very good round six. And right now could well be leading in the fight. Referee does not have a vote. Three judges will cast the ballots. They are from Las Vegas, Puerto Rico, and Hawaii. Carlos Padilla being originally from the Philippines. Boy, it's a crowd here in Sacramento that is into this fight. A sharp right hand of Bazooka. Continuing to be troublesome for Chacon, but it's been the right hand of Bobby Chacon that's been his primary weapon, and in many instances, the right hand lead. Now he hooks twice to the head of the champion, but comes back to the right. And then right again. Back 
blocked away. Surely a little arm weary. Saccone pursues him right to the rope. It was the champion that broke off the exchange out of the corner. Good left hand, good right hand by Saccone. 40 seconds to go in the seventh round. Another right, another right by Saccone. Cone, the better punch of that exchange. Hard shots to the body by Bazooka. Isha Cone bristled up to fight his way out of it. And eventually it was the champion that broke off the exchange and moved back out into the center of the ring. We go to round eight. Chacon challenging Bazooka Limon for the WBC World Super Featherweight Championship. I thought the last three rounds for the challenge have been pretty good. They've been, been very effective with that right hand. Bazooka. Wild. That one was almost low. by Chacon. Crowd of better than 4,000 filling Memorial Auditorium. The bulk of them are rooting for Chacon. Bobby getting his movement backwards just in time to ruin the force of that straight left thrown to the champion. Cone more effective in close with a shorter, sharper punch. After these guys get through today, you won't have any trouble if you met them on the street figuring out what they do for a living with. That's the champion's head back. Bazooka has not been effective in this round. And wild, almost lethargic. After that wild exchange, and when he, which he threw about 40 punches in the corner, he might be a little weary. Pretty good left hand by Bazooka there. Trying to set him up for a big left and can't find him. There's a left to the face, another left, a right over the top, a hook by Chacon. Chacon comes back with a left and a right. And now it's the champion taking a hard right to the jaw on the roof. 20 seconds to go in round eight. This is the biggest round of the fight for Bobby Chacon. Eight's over. The timekeeper, and he's got a great big old bell I think they saved from the railroad yards years ago because it whacks throughout the building when he whacks it with that hammer. Now let's see whether or not the champion Bazooka Limon, with his back to you there, can right his ship. It's been a little bit wayward of late. As Chacon has run off, in my opinion, four good rounds. Guess what I'm saying is I feel Chacon might well have won the last four rounds. 
But we're now getting up into the 9th, 10, 11, and 12 rounds. This is Limon's neighborhood up in here. Bobby Chacon moving more and better now than he was in the first four rounds of the fight. More movement. Big problem for Bazooka Limon. Like that. There's a cut on just on the right side of the nose near the corner of the right eye that resulted from a headbutt back in the fourth round. You see it on Chacon's face. And there's a bit of a nick in the right eyebrow area of the champion Bazooka Limon. A really whacked head. A left hook is a pretty good one by Bobby Chacon. Another left hook, another right hand. A hard right hand by Chacon. a good hard left hook by Bazooka Lamon in that wild exchange in the corner. There's two rights by the champion. And now he's starting to find Bobby Chacon, but Bobby comes right back with a left and a hard right, and the right hand backs up Lamon. He's in trouble. He's trying to hold on. You see him reach out and try to grab Chacon. Now he's shaking it off a little bit and starting to move. He's taunting him. Hard right hand by Chacon. Another right hand. Hard right hand by Bobby Chacon. 20 seconds to go. Bazooka Lamont's in trouble. He's about to lose his mouthpiece. He almost went down on that exchange. I don't think he knows who he, where he is. Chacon pressing the fight, and there's the bell, mercifully, for the champion. feels about it. It was a big round for Chacon. Here you see the champion about to lose his mouthpiece as Bobby Chacon wailed away. And it was a succession of right hands followed by a left hook along the rope. And then Lamont breaking it off, reached out his arms trying to grab Chacon and tie him up to get a breath. But Chacon would have none of it. And pursued go deep inside of himself now to find whatever it is that makes a fighter. He needs it right now. Right hand to the face. That's something that his trainer Hernandez, Colo Hernandez, has been trying to get him to use more in the fight. But he has, at times, reverted back to his well-known ways of just wailing away at the body, trying to wear down the opponent. But so far, Chacon had just been getting rougher and rougher and rougher. I thought Bobby started to turn it around back in the fifth round. Chacon a little quicker, getting off first a lot of the time now. the face of the champion. Oh, a hard left hand. Puts the cone on the seat of his pants. Bobby bounces up, but he was stunned. No question about it. The referee giving him the standing the eight count, mandatory eight count, as he stands in his corner. Now let's see whether or not Limon can take advantage of it. Came early. In the round, and Bazooka now trying to press it. Back he goes to the body. He needs to get 
out of that corner. Each time he has been trapped in the corner, he has absorbed punishment, but then suddenly would come winging out, and normally it's been the right hand that got him out of trouble. Now he gets out of there. the last 30 seconds of the 11th round this being round 12 now a lot of blood on the face of Bobby Chacon but it's from a cut on the nose below the eye no problem as far as vision is concerned the right hand caught the champion coming in the right 
right hand has been Bobby Chacon's fundamental weapon. Chacon down in the third round for an eight count. Never really went down, just his gloves touched. But the referee Herrera from Panama felt it was a knockdown, so he counted. But in the tenth round, he was dumped by a left hand from the champion. At the end of this round, we will take a station break. Champion pressing it now a little bit. Bazooka, Limon with his back to you. That is Bobby Chacon on the right. The right hand again. Chacon with the right hand lead to the face of the champion. Trying to win a world title for a fourth time, Bobby Chacon. He had beaten Cornelius Boza Edwards. And we understand that the winner of this fight is scheduled to go against Cornelius Boza Edwards. And that should be an awfully good one, too. Particularly difficult cut, even though it might look a little harsh. But as I said, it's not impairing his vision in any way. Round 13, scheduled for 15. The fourth meeting between these two men. They fought 27 rounds previously, all even. This is for the Super Featherweight Championship, WBC. The winner, supposedly, to go against Cornelius Boza Edwards. In effect, the champion. 31-year-old Bobby Chacon making his fourth try at a championship. 28-year-old Bazooka Lamone trying desperately to keep it. And they went to the weigh-in yesterday. Never looked at each other. Never cast a glance. Again, the champion trying to press it. But again, keeps running into the right-hand lead of Bobby Chacon. Down 
twice in the closing minute. Grabs and holds on, and the round is over. Hobbish Chacon, done. Came, watch this, from the round. A hard right and a hard left in that exchange, and both men were stunned. And the champion comes out wild. Both men a little wild here to start 14.
first meeting, Lemon took a split decision. In their second meeting, a technical seven-round draw under California rules and cut stopped it. In their third meeting, it was Chacon who took a ten-round split decision. The cleaner, more precise blows now belong to Bobby Chacon. Reasonably close. Sure, on the scorecard. room there's just a couple of them that I want to refresh your mind on now I don't want any low blows I want all blows above the belt line don't hold with one hand and hit with the free hand a bit of a knockdown the man down take a count of eight the man that's on his feet will go to the farthest corner and remain there until I motion him out now give the opportunity to work out of every clinch but whatever you're doing when I say break you stop what you're doing and step back but protect yourselves when you do Okay. Uh, you can use Vaseline, but go light. All right. Shake hands. Good luck.
Jeff Timken along with Louis Moreno here at ringside, the fabulous forum. The fight everybody's been waiting for. 15 rounds for the WBA featherweight championship of the world between the champion, Ruben Olivares, and the challenger, Alexis Arguello from Nicaragua. I think the first thing everyone notices right off the bat, Louis, is the height discrepancy. Arguello is just a wee bit taller, I would say, by nine. Very, very tall for a featherweight. And can he punch? 41 wins, three losses, which include 36 knockouts. Of course, Ruben Olivares' record speaks for itself, as he is the champion, 76 wins out of 80 pro fights, and he has stopped 69 opponents. Ruben Olivares, the shorter of the two fighters, wearing blue trunks, and Alexis Arguello from Nicaragua, wearing the white trunks with the blue feather. And Olivares catches Arguello off balance. Olivares has been through the wars. He knows what it's all about. This is the big, big step for Alexis Arguello. Olivares, ring-wise veteran at 26, knows every trick in the book, but rarely needs them. As he, as most ring scribes consider one of the greatest bantamweight champions to ever live, and he's making his mark as a featherweight champion. on Olivares. Both fighters in excellent shape and are well prepared to go the 15 round limit if necessary. But neither fighter expects it as both have predicted knockouts. Almost the end of round one. Round two, scheduled 15 rounders for the WBA featherweight title with the champion Olivares defending his crown against Alexis Arguello from Nicaragua. Olivares, the former Bantamweight chieftain, acquired his title last July 9th right here at the Forum when he stopped Japan's Senzuki Uragawa in seven rounds. This was an elimination for the championship, left vacant by Panama's Ernesto Marcel. But right now, Ruben Olivares, the champion, defending his crown against the much taller Alexis Arguello. Slapping left hook thrown by Arguello, landing on the arm of Olivares. That's been about it up until now. Both fighters very cautious, and reasonably so. There's a lot on the line tonight. Alexis Arguello, many of his Nicaraguan countrymen up here to see their 22-year-old hopeful possibly wrestle a crown away from Ruben Olivares. Alexis 
Oliveris weighed in at 125 and a half tonight, or should I say this morning. And the challenger, Alexis Arguello, weighed in at 124 and a quarter. Thirty seconds left in round number two. Ten seconds left. All fighters, even exchanges. number three for the title the featherweight title world boxing association version and the WBC featherweight title holder was here tonight wish both fighters well schoolboy Bobby Chacon Needless to say, Arguello holds the height and the reach advantage over his smaller opponent, champion Ruben Olivares. just sticking to his jab moving, bobbing, waving waiting for the opening Oliveris has been in with the best he knows what it's all about and he won't be fooled doesn't make many mistakes has been down but gets up and usually stops the opponent a right hand thrown by Oliveris lands on the jaw of Alexis. It's all of us. Pinning Aguayo against the ropes. But now Alexis comes back. And round three coming to a close. <laughs> round number four, scheduled 15 rounder for the world featherweight title. Arguello has had some exciting moments himself. I should say more on the negative side as he was right in the middle of that tremendous earthquake in Managua on December 23, 1972. And he saved himself and his family from great harm. Alex, 
But right now, the only thing these two fighters are concentrating on are each other and what they can do. One minute left in round number four. Seconds left in round number four. <laughs> round number five, scheduled 15 rounder. Jeff Temkin along with the very famous Louis Moreno here at ringside at the Forum. Bringing you live action between the champion, the featherweight champion, Ruben Olivares, and the highly touted challenger from Nicaragua, Alexis Arguello. Louis, there's been a pretty even fight up until now. How do you have it scored? Well, uh, I have Olivares a little bit in favor now. But uh, it's really nothing to say. I think it's an, an even fight until now. Yeah, I think so too, but there's a long way to go. And both fighters have been known to be extremely explosive. Still throwing those long right hands. Olivares, the champion from Mexico City. Fine ring record of 76 wins, just four losses and one draw. And he has stopped 69 opponents. Arguello, 41 wins, three losses, with 36 scales. And it's Arguello on the march. Arguello throwing the long overhand lefts and rights. A right hand by Arguello that did find its mark. But Oliveras fighting back. This has been Arguello's round up until now. Less than 10 seconds left. Arguello's handlers told their tall challenger to come out. They think they have found a way of beating Oliveras. And Arguello comes out firing.
ducking and slipping most of those punches, fans. The crowd is really reacting, but most of those punches are on the gloves of Oliveras. However, the ones there are, quite a few of them are finding home. Big crowd here at the fabulous forum in Inglewood, California. One minute left in round number six. Oliveras with an uppercut and starting to work to the body right above us. Oliveras. into the ropes. Dick Young, referee Dick Young steps in to break up the two fighters. It's the end of round number six. Round number seven. And in between rounds, Ruben Olivares' corner were working on his left eye and it's bothering Olivares. Oliveris's left eye, uh, slight abrasion right above the eyebrow. And that left eye of Oliveris is really red now, but has yet to start bleeding. One minute left in round seven. Both fighters really winging now. Oliveris to the body, to the head. Looking like the true champion he is. But our player keeps coming back. Good body shot by Arguello. And now it's Arguello. Arguello scoring. A real war. Ten seconds left. Bad fighters toe to toe. What a fight. Round number eight, we're halfway home. Scheduled 15 rounders, and it's, they're picking up right where they left off as Arguello lands a quick right hand, right on the eye that has been giving Oliveira some trouble in the last couple rounds. Oliveira's corner working on that eye. A slight cut, a slight cut. And now both fighters toe to toe again. I don't know how long they can keep that action. Blood streaming down his eye now. 
Oh, the last cut has opened up, and it is bleeding. The blood streaming down the side of Alvarez's left eye. But he has been the aggressor, and he's laying the leather to Alexis Arguello. Oliveris left eye is bleeding, but it's Oliveris who's throwing most of the leather now. Oliveris mixing his punches up, scoring to the body, scoring to the head, has Arguello against the ropes. Now it's Arguello coming back. Look, all oh, there is scoring to the body with those sharp left hooks. Almost over. <laughs> Round number nine, scheduled fifteen rounder. Been a lot of action in this fight. scores with a left hook. Oliveris' corner did a good job of closing up Rubens' cut above his left eyebrow. It has not reopened. This has really been a fast-paced, all-action fight. And it figured to be. There's a lot on the line. The world title. And not many people get a shot at it, as Arguello, I'm sure, realizes. One minute left, round number nine. fighters having a lot of respect for each other as round nine slowly comes to a close ten seconds left Number 10. Oliveris wipes the sweat away from his eye. And his handlers in his corner have done such a great job closing. Oliveris lands.
landing a right hand right on the jaw of Arguello. his jab the crowd predominantly from Mexico chance for all of us a left right for us a left right combination thrown by all of us rattled our quail minute left in round 10. Oliveris has landed tremendous punches this round. But Arguello has not gone down. Oliveris pushing his taller opponent into the corner, hammering away at the body. Ripping away. 20 seconds left. All of us. Coming into the home stretch now. Oliveras has been the aggressor the last several rounds. <laughs> Louis, how do you how do you think the fight's going right now? Well, I think that everybody has it's uh, it's in favor now. The last two rounds, he just uh, beat completely Arguello. It seems that those body shots that Oliveras has been landing are finally taking its toll and tiring out the taller Arguello. Well, you can see that he's working more relaxed now. He's uh, doing whatever he wants to do. That's the Olivares that we've been seeing here many times. Huh? Right. A true great champion. We've got a minute and a half left in round 11. And Oliveras starting in with those body flurries again. A man can just take so much. Oliveras is really dishing it out. But Arguello has not been in danger of going down. He has been holding his own and been countering with jabs and overhand rights himself. One minute left. Thirty seconds left. Oh. 
Both fighters slowing it down a little bit this last minute. Number 12, scheduled 15 rounder. A solid left hook thrown by Olivares. Ruben Olivares on the move. Trying to find that combination that'll put Arguello away. And Arguello, of course, realizing that the fight is close. Is looking for his own remedy. To put Oliveras away. and right. A overhand right thrown by Oliveras, but he has not been able to put Arguello down. One minute left in round 12. <laughs> right hand by Oliveras. But Arguello taking all, every punch Oliveras is dishing out. No power at all in the uh, Arguello punches. <laughs> Arguello is really tired. There's no power at all in the punches. <laughs> Not much on his punches. Olivares has Arguello in the corner. Ten seconds.
Ladies and gentlemen, the time, one minute, 20 seconds into round number 13, scoring the win by knockout, and new featherweight champion of the world, Alexis Arguello. It was that powerful right hand of Alexis Aguayo that did it again. His first trip to the U.S. And he's second now. He's 26, the same age as uh, Hannigan. And here he comes. Comes from Tacoma in Washington State, but boxes out of New Jersey these days. And some nice, polite, welcoming applause for the challenger. Got a good record, this man. Just that one defeat. Hunnigan, of course, unbeaten in 28 fights. But this man was so experienced in the amateur ring, he had well over 300 contests, lost only about a dozen or so, and would have boxed for the United States in the Olympics in 1980 had the Americans not pulled out. Lou Duva there, his manager in the blue. One of the most experienced in the game. As I say, Hannigan unbeaten in 28 fights since he turned pro back in 1980. He's done everything expected of him. Won the British title, uh, won the European title, and then, of course, that tremendous win against Don Curry in Atlantic City uh, back in September. Nobody really expected it except Lloyd Hannigan himself. The perfect record for a professional boxer. But, of course, as we say, he'll be giving away both height and reach here today, here tonight. And he faces a southpaw in bunkers, too. So now you will hear the build-up and the applause for the man who won the undisputed title, welterweight title. And he retains just two versions now, though the IBF and the WBC. There he is with his towel over his head on the shoulders of his manager, Mickey Duff, that well-known fight face. And Bobby Neal, who's done so much to help him win that world title. Did the same for Alan Minter, who's with us here tonight as well. So here's Hunnigan. And there have been bigger rounds of applause for world champions, but just look at that. He's quite a flash customer, Lloyd Hunnigan. He enjoys being champion. He's got that touch of arrogance that so many great champions have. He looks pretty cool, Alan. He looks very cool. I mean, um, he's, he's trained hard. It's, he's got the undisputed championship of the world on his shoulders. He wants to defend successfully. So, he, you know, he looks well and um, ready to go. He's a man who enjoys being a world champion and he knows how to enjoy himself. But, of course, he, he's well known for getting down to training and uh, he spent seven weeks in the United States doing the business and uh, sparring with Buster Drayton, who we know is here to uh, watch him tonight. Schedule, remember, for 15 rounds this contest tonight. We don't see, see too many 15-round fights these days. But this is scheduled for 15 rounds. Lou Duva in the corner there, uh, and that's the WBC belt being shown there. But Lou Duva in the corner is also the manager of Mark Breland, who's picked up the WBA version of this welterweight championship. Hunnigan relinquished that rather than box a South African. And uh, Breland won the vacant title and it could well be that we'll see a big payday eventually between this man. Lloyd Hunnigan, born in Jamaica, very much a Londoner since boyhood. And it's likely we'll see him face Breland in due course, but of course he's got to win this one. And uh, Bumpus is likely to be a pretty awkward customer. He's got a pretty good stoppage uh, rate. Stopped 20 opponents in 28. And they say he's not really a big puncher, but uh, the ratio of stoppages is certainly equal to that of Hunnigan's. So we're all set for the big fight, and we're about to hear the national anthems.
the Queen! So, 15-round schedule for the welterweight championship of the world, and at ringside is Harry Carpenter. Thank you, Des. Isn't it interesting that only this week the Border Control recommended that national anthems should not be played in future in this country? Because of bad behaviour in the crowd, in fact, they were played tonight and accorded proper respect. Here's Bernard Sullivan, MC. to decide the welterweight championship of the world. Sponsored by Budweiser. Presenting from Tacoma, Washington, in the United States, the challenger, Johnny Bumpus. <laughs> and from Bermans in London, the champion, seven pounds or 147 pounds and at the weigh-in today at the Odeon Leicester Square bumper scaled ten stone five and a half pounds or 145 and a half pounds Hannigan ten stone six pounds and six ounces or 146 pounds six ounces your referee for this contest is Mr. Sam Williams of Detroit. Your judges are Mr. Ove Ovison from Denmark, Mr. Walter Cavalieri of Philadelphia, and Mr. Frank Brunette of New Jersey. Your timekeeper is Mr. Jeffrey Williams of England, and the supervisor, Mr. Walter Stone of Rhode Island. Thank you. 15 rounds then, IBF rules, American referee doesn't score, three judges do the scoring, one from Denmark, two from the United States, so a heavy American influence on the official side, but all agreed to by Hannigan's manager, Mickey Duff. And we get our first glimpse at the difference in height. Hannigan, some three inches short. And the steering contest, now traditional. Hannigan has now discarded the suit of lights, the uh, silver dressing gown to reveal equally dazzling and glittering silver trunks. Hannigan's first defence in front of his own London crowd and the fight being beamed live to the States. Seven down, round one. said, I'm going to have to go looking for him, I don't think he'll come to me. And he predicted, Hannigan, at the weigh-in today, that he'd do it in eight rounds. Good right hand from Hannigan. Bumpus looks all arms and legs. There's 
no doubt at all that there's a whole new brand of confidence about Hunnigan. He loves being the champion and he's come to fight like one tonight. I just hope he doesn't overdo it and get careless. Cunningham doing a bit of showboating, as they call it in the States, on the ropes. Showing off a little bit with the ducking and weaving. It's a pretty active first round. 15 scheduled. Boxes his long arms, finding the head of Hunnigan. That's a good right. Over goes the challenger with one minute and 50 seconds only on the clock. A mandatory eight count. Those are the rules. This doesn't look too good now even. Surely Hunnigan can't get rid of him inside the round, can he? He might. So the first good right that Hunnigan swung had Bumpus on his bum. And he was holding on for dear life and Hunnigan got rid of him. 30 seconds of this opening round remaining. And Bumpus is struggling to stay in the fight. And he still looks dazed and shaking. 15 seconds. And he hugs Hannigan like a long lost brother. assault at the bell by Hannigan and the crowd couldn't have asked for anything much better and Bumpus doesn't know where he is and his legs, those long legs hardly held him up on his way back to his corner what a dramatic start to this it was a right hand from Hunnigan that brought the knockdown he came storming across the ring had Bumpus backed up towards the ropes and then suddenly a blinding right hand went through Looked as though it went through and caught him on the side of the jaw. He was badly hurt. Another angle. It did. It went through to the side of his chin. And it had uh, enough effect to keep him shaky for the rest of the round. I don't see now how Bumpus, who looks as though he may be having the start of eye trouble as well. I don't see how he can stay in this much longer. Round two. Hannigan is right over there to meet him and he floors him before Bumpus had a chance to get up. The bell had gone, the bell had gone and lose over the manager of Bumpus is protesting like mad. But the bell had gone, Hunnigan was across the ring to get at Sir Bumpus the moment he could and Bumpus wasn't ready for him. But I think you'll find the bell had sounded. The referee now is instructing the judges, I suspect, to subtract certainly been penalised for getting across the ring. Too early, according to the referee, I thought the bell had gone. Bumpus doesn't know where he is again. He's going, he's got to go, and he's going out of the ring. It's all over, it's all over, inside a minute of the second round. Bumpus has to be supported, and Hunnigan has successfully defended his title in the most dramatic way possible. A knockdown in the first round, an incident at the start of the second, and all over within a minute of the start of the second. You couldn't ask for a more dramatic fight than that in that space of time. So Hunnigan makes his first defense on his own territory, and he's done it in style. Bumpus doesn't know where he is, he's not recovered yet. Well, that's a sensational fight in every way. Now, 
around them. We can see the finish of the fight again. And this was only uh, some 40 seconds into the second round. Tremendous right hand sent him reeling into the ropes. And Hunnigan knew he had him. And at this point, he was threatening to knock him completely through the ropes and out into the press seats. And at that point, the American referee, Sam Williams, came across, pulled him away, and declared that the fight was over. Here's our unusual overhead camera looking down the bird's eye view. Right hand caught him across the top of the head. And Bumpers had nowhere to go except out of this fight. Those legs had hardly got him back to the corner at the end of the first round. Hunnigan holds up his WBC belt. He is still the WBC and still the, the IBF champion. Bumpers still not sure whether he's in London or Tacoma. So the Grand Hall at Wembley, smaller arena than we usually see for the big fights in this country. 2,600 people here. This hall has seen a most astonishing defence by Lloyd Hunnigan, who chalks up his 29th consecutive professional win. Well, he predicted eight rounds. I'm afraid he was six rounds out, but good for him. <laughs> I suppose he got it wrong on that count, Harry, yes. But a terrific win. Alan, he did exactly uh, what he did against Don Curry. He went for broke right at the start, took the fight to the man. It was a splendid victory. And here were we yeah. saying it might have been a difficult fight for him. He must, have, he must have been oozing with confidence. You know, I mean, he's destroyed Curry. He's c come here to defend against Bumpus. And the cornerman must have said, do the same thing, go out and take him out, which he's done. I thought he was looking a bit open, you know, although he was throwing plenty of punches. But he'd done the right thing, didn't he? I mean, he pressured Bumpers and just wouldn't let him, let him start leading off with uh, southpaw jabs and just got right into the fight and took him apart. Fantastic. He certainly uses that right hand. He's had his problems with it because uh, he couldn't throw it in preparation for the curry fight and he's been protective of it before this fight too, but he certainly did the damage with it today. But what did you make of the start of that second round with that incident? Because Harry said at the time he felt the bell had gone, and I must admit, we thought so yeah. too, didn't we? Well, I, I think the bell went, but what happened, Hunnigan was already up and making his way over to Bumpus' corner. And w when the second moved away, Hunnigan was on top of him. So um, I think the referee should have brought to the centre of the ring and stopped Hunnigan getting to Bumpus until he was off the stall. Well, Lou Duva went crazy, the manager uh, of, uh, of Bumpus there. But listen to the applause now for this man, Hannigan. Harry will be uh, endeavouring to have a word with him there for us in a second when it comes into the ring. But uh, it was a sparkling victory. And I think uh, we said at the start that uh, we've had heard better welcomes for world champions when he came into the arena. And but by heavens, he's certainly loser, getting tremendous please. reaction Thank now. You. And he deserves it. An absolutely sparkling win. And uh, that'll make everybody else look up again on the other side of the Atlantic. This is how it finished. But Bumpus really wasn't in contention in the second round. I, my feeling was, and about you, was that he hadn't really recovered from the first. No, he, at the end of the first round, you see him walk to his corner and he was wobbly. Then he, he, he came out for the second round and Hunnigan caught him with one shot and he just, it just happened again. He, he was just gone. And this is what happens. You know, I th maybe you can be caught cold, which you can be. But um, Hunnigan tonight was relentless and just wouldn't let him. You know, he, he knew what he wanted. He wanted to keep hold of his titles. And... Uh, show the world that he is, it was no fluke beating the, the likes of Don Curry. And he showed what a, what a good champion he is. You know, I, I, I personally didn't think he was, I thought it might have been a fluke beating Curry, but it showed tonight that no, he's, he's a danger. He's a danger in the world's weight limits. He's got a bit of a ruthless streak in, in him, as was shown there at the end there. He didn't really want to stop hitting him man, despite the fact he was outside of the ring. But um, they'll look up on, uh, on the other side of the States. I think a lot of people thought there, and a lot of the boxing judges in America thought, well, perhaps Don Curry really was having trouble making the weight, and he's since moved up to light middleweight. Uh, and they were kind of excusing yeah. uh, him losing to Hunnigan. But they'll look at this because Bumper's a highly rated fighter. He's the official number one challenger. That's now, in actual fact, of course, Hunnigan can take a few other challenges from down the ranking a little bit if he wants to. That's right, he's, he is the official number one, and he's destroyed him so easily. Now, the other, the other likes of the um, challengers in America are, are going to look to Hunnigan now and say, well, you know, can we avoid him? Because um, he's looking something special. Mm.
Well, it couldn't have been worse for poor old Bumpus, could it? I mean, uh, he spoke to me on grandstand yesterday and he talked a very good fight then, but things went wrong for him right in this very first round. And it was the, the right hand. I thought originally when I saw that, that he hadn't quite landed, but you don't knock a man down if you haven't quite landed. No, I think I looked on that angle there, it just slid past his chin, but on the other angle, it, it just caught his chin, which is, is good enough. You know, he could have, if he was allowed, he could have got into the fight and made it awkward for mm. Hannigan. But, you know, they said, take him out, and he just took him out. Yeah. And, you know, to, so he's, he's still the champion. He's become a more aggressive a sort of fighter over over the last year or two. When he won, I think when he when he won the European Championship, when he yeah. beat Rossi in Italy uh, there a couple of years ago, he started looking as though he w he wanted to finish fights yeah. quicker and That's earlier. That's right. The thing is, you know, he he's done all what's been asked of him, and um, by beating Curry, I mean. Um, he must really believe in himself. And that's what you've got to do. If you don't believe in yourself, you waste of time. But he believes in himself now. He's the undisputed champion. I mean, and he wants to keep hold of that title. Um, it's I, think, almost, I think it'll go a long way. Do you? Yeah, it's, almost, it's almost helpful, isn't it? Beating a great champion to begin with. And then, you know, you yeah, can sort he, of take on all comers. But right. I think that uh, we can hear from him now. He's about to have a chat with Harry Carpenter. He's a happy looking man. Here's the champion with me, Lloyd. That was some job you did there. <laughs> You've never done a better job in your life than that, have you? Well, I was in the best condition in my life, Harry, because I went to um, America, I told my manager I want to go to America to train from now on because I can get the right kind of training, the right kind of sparring. I've been sparring with the champion of the world for this fight. You can't get that sort of sparring in England. I was fit than ever been in my life. I was ready to eat that guy alive. I was ready. You told me eight rounds earlier today, but you did it a lot quicker than that. Eight rounds, Harry. Uh, well, I decided that Mickey ain't going to play me for overtime, so I'll finish early. <laughs> Do you want to have a look again? We can show the finish first. Just have a look. It's coming up here. Yeah. You really had him go. I mean, he was in no state, really, to come out for the second, it seemed to me. Anyway, here's the finish. Tell us. Yeah, I, hit, I, was, I was getting, but I was getting myself muddled up a yeah. bit. So I just had to calm myself down. I just had my best shot with a right hand, because we've been practicing some of the things, right man. Still. And I just decided to keep fighting. When he was down, I wasn't going to move back. No way. The referee job to pull me off and stop the fight. Oh, can't or whatever. I was just going to keep punching. Even if it was on the ground, I was going to keep punching because it's up to the referee to pull me off. Now, we're going to show you next the start of the second round, which was a bit controversial because well, the Americans have been protesting like mad ever since. Well, well, look, but I think the bell had gone. What do you think? The bell did gone. Yeah, Harry, I saw his manager was taking his time to come out of the ring. I saw Bumfuss was um, taking his time to come off his stool. And I was going to take advantage of the situation. That's what I did. I ran over there. I said, right, you're taking your time to come out. I'm, I'm here to fight. I told you I'm here for war. I'm not here to mess around when I'm in this ring. I don't get paid for overtime. I'm here to fight. They made a hell of a fuss about it, but I think you were right because I'm sure the bell had gone. It had gone, hurry, and I'm here to win. I'm not here to mess around. I don't take prisoners. <laughs> We've got one more, I think, to show. The first, the first knockdown. Terrific right hand punch. You yeah, well, that was a good right hand punch. I was messing around a few times. I was missing. I decided to throw that right hand straight through the opening because his hand was coming down at his side. And I see that when I've been hurting him, he was a bit dizzy. And I thought if I get a good right hand in, that would, that would be it. You really knew you had him, I think, at that point, don't you? Well, it wouldn't Harry, go much longer. I told him to, it was all rumbo business today. There's no messing around. It's all ragamuffin stuff, you know? We got Mickey Duff, your manager, with us. <clears throat> you must be proud of that performance, Mick. I'm delighted, but I'm not very surprised. He's in a mood he's possessed these days in the gymnasium. You know, when you box five, six rounds a day with Buster Drayton, you're really at war. You're talking about a guy that has been in for, for years with, with uh, Marvin Hagler. They, they, neither of them took any prisoners. The way he's boxing right now, I wouldn't hesitate to put him in with anybody, even any junior middleweight in the world. And I think that's what we may have to go to because I think he's going to, within a year, he will clean up all the world weight opposition. Now, Mark Breland is here tonight, the WBA champion, but you've got problems there because he's, he's banned by the WBC. He's for banned a automatically years. for two years. Now, you know, the WBC often have rules which they can change. They have, they have a meeting and they can make special conditions. We'd be delighted to fight Breland, but not at the risk of losing a second title without getting into the ring because the WBC have made it emphatically clear that if he fought a South African or the winner of, a limina of an eliminator involving a South African, they would, they would withdraw his recognition. Okay, thank you, Mickey. Well done, Lloyd. Thank you. I like the dressing gown. Yeah, I like I it too. I'll get the name of the tailor off you later. Yeah, <laughs> great. <laughs> thank you.